Hi, my name is Sandeep Pandey. Uh, today I'll be showing you uh, some fruit and vegetable carving which you can use at home uh, for, for your starter plates, for main course plates and the buffets and all. For the fruit and vegetable carving you will need um, a paring knife which is a kind of a bendy knife as you can see there, a chopping knife uh, for basically for large fruit and vegetables and a peeler. Basically any fruit or vegetable can be used for carving. We'll be taking it from the simplest um, simplest vegetable uh, to the complex and I'll be going through with you uh, step by step. So basically I've done some of the small bits here which can be used on the on the starter plates as I said or on the buffet. They are pretty small to go on the buffet but when they are put together they can turn into a bouquet or something and that can be put on the buffet. The plum tomatoes are nice and red and ripe so they are basically nicer to use uh, instead of the normal tomatoes. So if you look at this, what we are doing here is we just take the end off, keep, keep it uh, flat on the bottom. All we have to do is take the peel off, but the peel shouldn't break in the middle and the peel has to be thin as you can. Sharp knives are much better and as I said, this is one of the simplest garnish which you can use. They're very uh, quick to make as well and uh, they look pretty good can go on a starter plate or on a salad you can use it on a bouquet or something like that now as you see I'm finished peeling there now when it comes out you put on a chopping board it looks like a figure of S so that you know you have done it right okay the bottom stays away from you the top corner stays towards you and you start rolling it nothing else simple as that just start rolling it and when you come at the end you just put the thing on the top and what you see there is a kind of a rose and that can be presented on a plate okay any tomatoes anything left like that that can be used for sauces or for salads and things like that okay now I'm gonna show you a couple of more things with the tomato now other tomato I have done here is it's like it's called a Thai, uh, thai rose uh, it's basically the same way what we have done it all we have done is same thing you take this the peel off and when you're going, this is a bit time consuming. What you have to do is just carve some teeth. You're taking small little teeth. Same thing, taking the peel off and carving some teeth. So we are moving from a little bit simple garnish towards a bit of a complex garnish. And as you see, it's the same procedure. When you finish peeling it, it's exactly the same procedure. You put it on the table, it looks like a figure of S and you start rolling it now and it's called a thigh rose for some reason but it, and that's how it looks like okay the whole thing about garnishing is putting different colors together so basically if you look at fruit and vegetables they are many different colors and when they put together they look beautiful so if we have done red something and if we have a cucumber salad that will go very nice with the cucumber salad okay so we move on to something which is green we have done is take a piece of cucumber cut into half with the peel and all what we have to do is just slice it not all the way through as you can see the end is still attached not all the way through and even slices just even very thin okay and numbers should be actually odds okay so it has to be five seven or nine so one two three four five six and a seven so say we go for seven and there's one loose end, there's one joint end. So from the joint end side of it, what we are doing is we're peeling it, okay? We're peeling it, not up till the end, but just stays intact in the end. And when you open this, it's like a fan kind of a texture. So we open one and we fold another one in there. Okay, we open one and fold in there. They are called Thai garnishes and a lot of Thai people, they use it to garnish their fish, fish salads, uh, fish dishes and all that. And that's how it looks, okay? So these are a little bit simple, simple garnishes we have done. We're gonna move on to some of the complex. Either you carve something on the cucumber and make it look that design or you carve something out of it and use it somewhere else. So what we have done here is we carved a, like, a, like a leaf from it, okay? That's again, this is a simple carving. So say if I draw a line, to make that line visible, either we take that line out or we take the sides of the line taken out so that it looks visible, okay? So I've 
Turn the mark as a V, okay? We can't see it at the moment. Okay, so what we have to do is be carving a texture of a leaf, okay? Just to make it visible, make the interior look visible. Okay, so that's what we are doing, okay? It's a, it's a, it's a figure of V basically, it goes this way and goes this way. This is the whole procedure all the way up till the end. And we basically copying the same thing what we have done the other side. So if you, if you can imagine a leaf, that's the center part of the leaf and we are just making the outside of it. So now we have a bit of a texture going on there. We know that's the interior of the leaf, that's the out part. So basically we have to take that leaf out to make it visible. Now the knife is fairly deep going in there so that we are well able to pull it out when we need it. And I'm just outlining those V signs from inside, just outlining them, just basically with the knife, just following the shape what is inside around it. So basically what you're doing is going all the way deep in the cucumber, avoiding any cuts which we have done before any incisions there and because when we put the knife it was fairly deep in there so these things will simply just pull out nothing else to do and there we go we have a leaf there now this leaf two or three can be just joined together with the red flowers and will look much more beautiful if you need a peel of an orange or a, or a lemon in the same way you can do exactly the same take the peel out and just figure of S, roll it around, and you can get the same flowers out of that. Okay, we're gonna go into a little bit more deep carving. That's a beetroot, okay, everybody knows. Now, what we're gonna do with this is, we're gonna carve, not, not a make a rose out of it, not no peeling, we're actually going to carve a rose out of it. So, top and tail, okay. Now, we have to see the beetroot, it's nicely, nicely round, okay. So what we have to do is just imagine an imagine line which is half going halfway through, okay? And we make it a, in a shape of a spindle. Okay. So it doesn't have to be too perfect, it's just nearly the same on the other side. Now we can decide which, uh, which part of the rows we're gonna use. Is, do, do I think is that more uniform or that one? So as we can see, this is more uniform side of it. So we're gonna use that as the bottom of the rows. Don't worry too much about on the top. So what we are doing is just to make sure the bottom is just perfectly flat. What we are doing is we are carving a petal. So basically knife has gone in there. The bottom of the petal is nice and thick. The top is as thin as you can and we carved a petal out of it. And as, as I said before, if you, if you slice something to make it visible, you have to take the background out of it. It's, the, it's basically the same procedure over and over again. So we carve another leaf out and same again. So we have three petals there. I'm gonna go with five because if, if you do odds, it's, it's always, it's always not, it looks nicer. The first stage of that is finished. That we have carved the petals out around the half part of, uh, of, of the beetroot. Okay, now what we have to do is put the knife inside and make the surface flatter, which is inside. All we are doing is with the knife going all the way in there and the inside surface to be flat as possible. Okay, as you can see, I've taken that out and it's much more flat inside. Now, we don't need the rose to be sticking out of its own petals. So what we have to do is just make sure it's nice and flat on the top as well. Okay. And just to, just to make the petals a little bit more visible, what I'm doing is just again going through the inside line and taking a bit of the um, a bit of the beetroot out. Okay, the next petal we have to carve inside should start in the middle of the first petal. So basically, that's a petal which we carve. So in the middle of that, next petal has to carve. Okay, so it's the same way petal we are doing. So it's the same way we are taking the background out to make it visible and going all the way again around the drum. That's the second stage is over. What we have to do is make it 
more spherical. If you look at a, a real rose, it's, it's, it's closed from inside, open from outside. So that's what we have done. It's more closing inside, okay? Again, getting a petal halfway through and just taking the backing of it as out. And we left with the inside of it. All you do is just make a small incision and take out a bit of a beetroot off so that it just looks like there's the flower is kind of opening inside and nothing else. Now, so we're done there. Basically, you should absorb that in ice cold water for say half an hour. So what it does it, all these fine petals will open up and it will look much more real. We're just gonna give it a quick wash there. Just take any small bits out. And there it is, as you can see, a, a kind of flower there. So these are the simple things and hopefully uh, we'll move on to a, a, some complex stuff and I'll show you some more coming up.